Hey y'all, it's Nicole Ray just um, coming back to give you a word that the Lord has laid on my heart that I've been kind of procrastinating and recording, but um, I wanted to talk to you all about wholeness in Jesus' name. Um, the word says, for in Christ all the fullness of God lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. Father God, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for leading us and guiding us, Father God. I pray as I record this video that you would allow it to be less of me and more of you, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you would just open the hearts and minds and the ears of the hearer, that they might be able to receive this word from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So when we talk about wholeness, <clears throat> excuse me, we wonder what is wholeness? Well, Webster's describes wholeness as being complete, being sound in body, undivided, not broken, damaged, or impaired. The Bible describes wholeness as being um, perfectly well in body, soul, and spirit. So that means your mind and your emotions are whole and together. Um, it's the complete sanctification and restoration of you as a person. Um, and, and the reality is that God's original design for man is really not only achieved through Jesus Christ. The only way that we achieve wholeness is through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, you know, we, we, we go through life and we're constantly looking to be made whole. And we try in our own strength. We do different things. We get self-help books. We try to get a different career or find a different spouse or um, involve ourselves in different activities and hobbies, thinking that those are the things that are going to make us whole. When really the word of God says that our wholeness comes from Jesus Christ. So the question becomes, how do you achieve wholeness? Um, first thing you need to do in order to achieve wholeness is first recognize that you're broken. If you can't even recognize that you're a broken and weak individual, you'll never really be able to achieve wholeness because in your mind, you're already whole. Um, the second thing that we need to do is we need to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He is the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, everything in between. He's the one who went and died for us on the cross. And so you need to accept him. The reason he died is so that his blood would wash away our sins. That is where we are to achieve our salvation. And as we achieve salvation and accept Jesus Christ, he is able to begin the sanctification process within us. You need to also ask for forgiveness of your sins, but also repent and begin to turn away from them. And again, the only way that you achieve uh, full repentance and the ability to be able to turn away from sin is to accept the Holy Spirit into your life and to let, it gu let him guide you and show you the things that are right in the way that you should go. You also need to have faith in him that he has the ability to help you turn from sin. You know, there's a lot of people who ask for forgiveness, but they're never really made whole. So they're forgiven, but they're never made whole. Um, I was at church in, in Philadelphia, uh, Miracle Temple of Christ, and Pastor Warren Martin was preaching from Luke 7, verse 36 through um, 50. And that's one of the things that he really pinpointed on. Uh, the basic gist of the story is the woman who goes into the Pharisee's house where Jesus was seated and having dinner and she begins to pour oil on him and and wipe his feet with her with her tears and her hair and the Pharisees are just kind of looking like why are you allowing this why are you letting this go on and Jesus says you know of all the people she has come in and she has ignored everybody else that's here and she has taken care of me where you have only invited me in so there's that element of inviting him in to ask him for forgiveness and then once he forgives you of your sins 
you're forgiven. And then there's allowing him to come in and blocking everything else out so that he can then make you whole. Yes, Jesus can forgive you of your sins, but what we really want and what we should really be striving for is to be made whole in him. This means that your joy can't be stolen. It means that the things that you used to do, you won't do because you are in Jesus Christ. Therefore, you become a new creation. So this is what we really need to be striving for. We really need to be striving for being whole in Jesus Christ. When you allow yourself to realize you're broken and you allow yourself to accept Jesus, you can then be healed. And in your healing, you can be restored and delivered. He can carry you out of situations that seem so um, mundane and hurtful. And, you know, it could be relationships. It could be on the workplace. It can be anything. But God has the ability to change all of that if we would just give it to him, if we would just surrender it all to him. So... That leads me to the next point. We need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. In order to move further towards wholeness, we need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that the Holy Spirit will transform us and he will sanctify us. The Bible says, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind happens when you accept the Holy Spirit and allow him to lead you and guide you in your life. You also have to let him do it daily. It is not like he he comes in and then voila, you're now new. It is a daily process, meaning each day that you wake up in the morning, you need to make the choice to say, you know what, today, Lord, I give it all to you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to pray to you. And whatever you want from me on this day, I want you to have it. Because the word also says to not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is going to worry about itself. You may not even get tomorrow, so you need to be worried about today. Um, and then you need to begin to turn off the noise. And I went to a, a conference, actually a WOW conference, um, Broken Hole, and Pastor Dana talked about all of the noise, you know, children, work, uh, music, just everything, cars, everything that's going on around you. Even, you know, maybe the enemy is talking to you in your mind. All of these different things that you hear, just noise, clatter that breaks breaks you from being able to hear the word of God. But what we talk about is you need to be able to turn off the noise. Um, it's like I said in one of my other videos, God's voice is like it's coming through a radio and you need to be able to fine tune it to get rid of all of the static and all of the other noise so that you can tune in and hear just him. The only way that you do it is by making a daily commitment to allow the Holy Spirit to move within you and to take time, be intentional about the time that you take with him so that you can be quiet, be still and hear God because he's always talking and he's always moving. Even if he's saying, be still, even if he's not answering you the way you want to be answered, it doesn't mean he's not talking. But we need to be able to turn down the noise. As part of our wholeness journey, learning to turn down the noise to hear God's voice is something that we need to be striving to do. So today, I have a challenge for you. Um, if you can do the challenge every day, awesome. But today specifically, after you listen to this video, I have a challenge that you would just go and just sit in silence for just five minutes. No radio, no TV, no kids. Anything, any way that you could just take yourself away. If there's a quiet room you can go to, go to a quiet room. It may not be perfectly quiet, but the intention is to purposefully move yourself away from the noise. Um, the reality is you may not get all the way away from it. I have a five-year-old daughter, and a lot of times I can go in my room, but I can still hear the TV, or I can still hear her giggles and things like that. So it's never perfectly silent, but because I'm in my room, because I'm in my quiet place, it's a lot less noisy than if I was sitting out in the living room with her while she was watching TV or playing or what have you. So go to a quiet place if you can, just for five minutes. And... What I want you to do is just quietly allow yourself to slowly turn down the noise that's going on in your mind. You can whisper, Lord, I just want you to speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. Call on the name of Jesus. Speak softly even to yourself. To, and that will slowly allow your mind to trickle away the noise. And you'll be able to get begin to filter out noise and hear from God. As you're sitting there, 
quietly, think about all that you've experienced in life. Ask yourself if you're still hurt from anything. Ask yourself if you're angry. Are you holding on to any hurt or unforgiveness? Do you worry about what people will think? Are you fearful? Think about all of these things. And as you begin to think about these things, ask yourself honestly, are you whole? Yes, you do all of these different things to try to make yourself whole. And maybe in the flesh you are whole because your family is what it needs to be. You have a good job and everything like that. But are you really whole? Remember, wholeness does not just speak to the things around us, but it's mind, body, and soul. Are you fully whole? Are you really whole? Are you whole in some ways, but not whole in others? As you begin to think about this, ask yourself, what are you doing to make yourself whole? Again, are you trying to do everything in your own strength, or have you given it to your God? Are you tired of doing everything in your own strength? Are you ready to give everything over to God that he might be able to lead you and guide you and show you the way? And lastly, as you begin to think of those things, I encourage you to give them over to God. Give it to God right in that moment. As you think about that issue that's holding you down, that thought that you keep having, give it to God right in this moment. The word says, cast your cares on the Lord. Do not be anxious for anything, but by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your request known unto him and he will give you a peace that passeth all understanding. You will never have the peace that you need. You will always have your joy stolen if you do not give it over to the Lord. So this day, I just ask that you would just say this prayer with me. Father God, I'm broken and in need of wholeness. Forgive me for trying to do this on my own. I submit to you now and invite your Holy Spirit to lead and guide me. Walk with me, Lord, and lead me to wholeness. In Jesus' name, you are worthy of all glory, all honor, and all praise. I honor you and I welcome you into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I encourage you to really make it your commitment. Take time to write down prayers. Every prayer doesn't have to be a memo, something that you come up with off the top of your head. You can write and read a prayer, but I encourage you to write a prayer that you can recite daily to give yourself to God each day. After a while of reading it, it'll become memory. Just make sure that whatever you say comes from your heart and that you are truly committing yourself to giving everything to him on this day. One day at a time. One day at a time and you will begin to achieve wholeness in Jesus' name. This is Nicole Wright. I pray that you would all be blessed and I pray that this message blesses you in Jesus' name.